doing this work doesn't absolve you of the experience of being a human being. And you are still, I mean, you're just a prime example. It's one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the show of someone who found success, but also experienced the negative emotion that comes with transitioning your business into a new process. The first time that you take rest is not going to feel good. Welcome to Sincerely Future You, a podcast that helps ambitious women like you make decisions today with the future you in mind. All right, you guys, before we bring on our guest, before you get to experience the world behind the curtain, I want to hype you guys up. I want to talk today to those of you who are already in the thick of your decisions, not the ones who are thinking about starting something or thinking about your future self. I'm talking to those of you who are in it. This month, I am in the doing right now. Anyone else? I decided to launch the Masterful CEO School, the splash pad, throw a kick-ass first birthday party for my daughter, take an international vacation to Costa Rica, attend my coach's retreat in Atlanta, throw a full day live event for my clients and do a Spartan 10K all in the same month. And the planning and decision-making was intentional and detailed and pretty meticulous, but... One thing we don't always remember is that all the planning and confidence in the world can't protect you from the negative emotions of being a human being. If you, like me, are in it right now, if you're experiencing fatigue, doubt, anxiety, worry, or stress, remember, this is all a part of having a full and wonderful life. Nothing has gone wrong. You didn't make some terrible mistake. You shouldn't have waited until next month. Masterful CEOs and good people don't just feel positive vibes only with a peace sign emoji. No, being in it to win it is going to bring you to your knees sometimes. It's going to test you and you can handle it. So here's what you're not going to do. You're not going to double down on the negative emotion train by feeling stressed about feeling stressed, by doubting your decisions in the past because you're feeling doubt now, by worrying if you are ever going to win because you're currently worrying about what's in front of you. Have your own six. Love on past you for being so bold and brave and putting you in this position. She knew you can handle it and you can. Make room for all the feels, my friend, and repeat after me. I am willing to feel whatever it takes for as long as it takes to live out my dreams. I am not scared of my emotions. I am a freaking rock star and this feeling is temporary. And however it turns out, I'm either going to win or I'm going to learn. There is no downside. Hi, you guys. Welcome back to the show. I have a very exciting interlude for you where usually I say like this podcast, this show is not an interview podcast. I designed it really as a place for you to access future you work, for you to access the version of you and the wisdom of how you your most masterful CEO self thinks about money, thinks about time, and thinks about your day-to-day interaction with your business. But every once in a while, I do have a guest on, and I get lots of submissions for people who want to be on the show. Actually, probably I'd say about it's gotten to five to 10 requests daily, but the only people that I want to bring you are people who have been through the Masterful CEO School themselves. They refer to themselves as the Habsters, was our old brand. And today I have for you a very special guest, Brianna McGinn. Brianna is a a former member of the Masterful CEO School, and she is the owner, founder, and lead designer of Wildflower Touch which is a floral design company based in Long Island, New York, which is also where I live. So Brie and I, while I haven't met a lot of my clients in person, I have had the pleasure of squeezing her in real life. And she is just quite a special individual. Like a lot of you guys that listen to the show, she started out just as a person who was really passionate about flowers and really passionate about 
you know, the experience of a flower growing from the farm and then coming to be this beautiful thing that we now use to elevate our events. And with her particular de floral design company, she brings fairy tale wedding daydreams to life. She is really into that joyful, funky, and unique, eclectic, fresh vision. So if that is you and you want to see her stuff, you're going to have to check her out on Instagram and certainly over on her website. And if you're getting married, you're going to want to be in touch with her. But for today on the show, we are going to be talking about her journey of being a creative and how she handled diving into the business, how scary and terrifying it was and also how magical it was too and how we can bring the magic out even if it isn't your forte. So without further ado, welcome to the show, Brianna. Hi, Jess. Oh my God, I'm so excited to be here. Yes, yes. So <laughs> I know it's always kind of like, where do we even begin with your story? But why don't you tell us a little bit about what made you decide that you wanted to start a business? I had spent a lot of time after college working for small businesses, and I just loved all the intention that went behind like running a business. And I love the idea of, or like the freedom that came with owning a business initially. Yeah. Like I um, <laughs> soon realized <Initially>. that, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the freedom you really need to allow yourself that freedom and it doesn't just come because you have a business. I soon learned that. Okay. But. So I know exactly what you're <laughs> alluding to when you say the freedom that you have to allow yourself. So why don't you yes. walk us through that? Talk about, right? Everyone thinks when they start a business, they're like, you're your own boss. You can work when you want to work, flexible hours. And that is absolutely true. But what was the biggest hurdle that you found that you were waiting to happen to you that we coached you through and and figured it was actually more of a decision than it was a right that you just have when you become a business owner? I mean, I had gotten into a routine of just working all of the waking hours, feeling like I had to be responsible for every aspect of my business in order for it to function. And even now I'm still learning how important it is to delegate the responsibilities and to set boundaries within my scheduling at like when I work and when I rest and when I play and all of that needs to come into play. Like, when you're running a business in order for it to be sustainable, really. Yeah. So what, can you give us an example of one time where, where you were really resistant to resting or to not working that we kind of worked through together? I feel like you have one in mind. Do you? <laughs> I mean, I, there were a couple, but I will say that I know that you had decided, I, this was actually one that you had decided on your own that you wanted after I don't know if you consider yourself, there's something that Gretchen Rubin, who is the author of The Happiness Project, but she's also the author of this book called Better Than Before, which is a book about habits. And she talks about when you're approaching a habit, you might fall into the category of an abstainer or a moderator. And I would guess that you're someone who likes to be either like a bit all or nothing, because that's how you approached this. Uh, would you say that you are an abstainer in, in that way? Like, as in, uh, let's say that you had your favorite guilty pleasure snack, and could you have it in the house and only have like a little bit every day? Or would you rather just <laughs> not have it in the house? Yeah, it just wouldn't have to be in the house. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely like an all or nothing type of person yeah. or I have that type of mentality and I'm trying to find um, the gray area now, like meeting myself in the middle yeah. in that aspect. <laughs> it, takes work. it takes work, but also, right, we don't always have to work against what our tendencies are, which is why I say it's really important to know what your tendencies are. And so how you kind of took the masterful CEO scheduling upon yourself and you were like, okay, I know that if I want more rest, I really just, what if I did take the whole month of January off, or I think like three weeks and 
took that off from my business right before Valentine's Day, which we know in the floral industry is like the biggest day of the year, essentially. So what um, was that experience and what did you have to do in order to let go during that time? It ended up being such a smooth experience um, logistically. And I had done something similar the year before as well, where I'd gone away in January, a few weeks before Valentine's Day. And I just approached it from a completely different point of view the second time around, because at first I went into it and I'm just like, oh, I just, I just want to get away. I just want to leave and Mm. it'll, everything will fall into place. It'll happen. Like, uh, everything will get done, but it ended up being such a stressful experience because the entire time I was away, I was just thinking about all the things I needed to do when I got home and the things that I needed to do while I was away. Mm. So I didn't really allow myself the time to rest. And the second time around, everything was pre-calculated. I had everything done before I had left and everything planned out for the time that I was away and that I would come back so that I just knew that it was taken care of and I didn't have to stress myself out while on vacation. Yeah. And so I remember you popping into coaching like once or twice while you were actually on vacation and you were like, yeah, I just wanted to kind of like check in with myself and see where my thoughts are at. And you did have one thought that I think did still come up while you're on vacation. You were like, actually, everything's running, running pretty smoothly. I remember you having thoughts about like how long, if you had an inquiry, like how Mm -hmm. long people would wait for their inquiries um, before they could be responded to and how, how did you handle that in the moment? And then we could talk about what happened when you came back. Sure. So in the moment I was feeling I guess, like I was doing a disservice to myself in the business by not Mm. being so attentive to my emails and answering the inquiries in a timely manner. And I felt like I was going to lose that opportunity if I didn't get to it right away. And that I, that I was just like letting these people like slip through my fingers almost like you had brought up, well, do you think that you're worth it. And that wasn't a thought that I had at the time. Like I just kind of felt like I was doing something wrong. But when you said that I like had to take a day and really just like go over on my end, how I felt about myself and the business and the type of clients that I wanted to attract and work with. And it, it took a while to really believe it that, you know, I am worth the wait and that I do deserve rest and a vacation. Like I had gotten the Valentine's day thing down pat at that point, mm-hmm. but I wasn't ready for the feelings that were coming up with the inquiries yeah. that were coming in. Oh, so good. <laughs> right. Like, so you were like, step one was figure out all of the logistics. Right. And that is, mm-hmm. we talk about it in the masterful CEO school all the time. It's like, do the math, make as many decisions as you can in advance, be an advanced decision maker schedule. Right. Those are the processes. The harder work is that back end work where you have to allow yourself to feel the negative emotion when it inevitably comes up because doing this work doesn't absolve you of the experience of being a human being. And you are still, I mean, you're just a prime example. It's one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the show of someone who found success, but also experience the negative emotion that comes with transitioning your business into a new process. The first time that you take rest is not going to feel good because the reason why those of you who are usually coming to me saying like, I need help building and rest, it's not because you haven't rested, not because you can't already. You haven't rested because you have thoughts about yourself or what your value is when you're resting. What do you believe about yourself now and about your value as a business owner while you're actually not actively in the business? Do you have thoughts about yourself right now about your value as a business owner and as a person when you're not working? 
Yeah, I feel like I'm giving myself a lot more grace than what, what I used to do. And I'm letting myself feel all the human emotions. So even when I do like get back with the, um, like the thought pattern that, oh, I'm not doing enough for the business. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe I should be at the beach right now. Maybe I should be working. I'm definitely more receptive of those feelings and just letting it kind of like wash through and observing them so that I can move past it and be like, no, wait, like I can stop myself and reassure myself that I'm doing the right thing for myself like in the midst of it. Yeah. And I think that one of the weird parts of this process is that you have to practice making room and creating safety in the idea that some clients won't be there when you get back. And yeah. so why don't we talk about that? So I remember you had this thought like, okay, I am still getting inquiries. So at first you had the thought like, oh, I'm not going to get inquiries because I'm not in the business. I'm not doing things. And then you were getting inquiries and you were feeling really great about that. You had set up and we had made the decision that you were going to set up a, a an away email for while you're away, letting people know that you were away and that you would get back to them on this date, right? Um, and then what happened when you got back? So I got back and I had answered all the inquiries and I didn't hear back from most of the people. <laughs> and I should mention also that that was the same time that I decided to raise my prices. So mm -hmm. I was returning from vacation. I was answering all these inquiries, but it was also like, oh, by the way, I'm charging more than what I used to charge. So it was also <laughs> like feeling like I like, did I make the right decision in raising my prices? Is it justified? And I mean, should I go back? And I mean, how did you feel when you decided to raise your coaching prices for the first time? Oh yeah. Terrible, terrible. And I've done it like <laughs> six times. And I say this all, this is why I love to have you guys all on the show because I think people need to hear that it just doesn't, you don't, you can't wait until you're like, Oh yeah, I feel like, oh no, totally I should raise my prices right now. If that's how you feel when you're raising your prices, you've waited at least a year too long to raise them, right? <laughs> and so it's never going to feel comfortable. It's never going to feel natural because the truth is our brain loves evidence to support any decision that we're making. It likes to use evidence. But the problem with that is that we don't have evidence in our past to support any decision we're making as an entrepreneur. We don't have evidence to support the fact that people are going to buy our new prices because they're new, right? And so we need to believe in something that we can't yet see. And that process is requires a couple of things of us. Number one, it requires us to make room for the cognitive dissonance of, okay, I know that the math problem needs to change. In order for me to reach my goal, I know that. And in order for me to raise the quality of the work that I'm doing, in order for me to attract a higher level of clients so that I could get these clients that want me to do really big, you know, extravagant work that I desire to do, I need to raise my prices. And then on the other side, I also believe, well, everyone that comes to me isn't saying yes yet, right? Your brain is going to like go there. And so you're, you're battling these two parts of yourself that say like, but how do I know this is the right time or the right choice and that I'm not going to just go bankrupt. And so why I love your example so much is because your worst case scenario literally came right in, right? As you got back from vacation, you're <laughs> yes. like, tell me the truth. Like, <laughs> can I, should I go on vacation? Should I believe that I'm worth it? Should I raise my prices? And you, like a true abstainer, did all of them all at once. You were like, all or nothing. I'm going to raise my prices. Yeah. I'm going to go on vacation. I'm going to schedule. I'm going to set everything up. I'm going to do all of this. And then I'm going to come back. And he responded. And your brain also was what wanted to capitalize on that like scarcity and the vagueness. And these are all of our brains, not just yours, right? And it, it's like, see, 
you shouldn't have raised your prices. C, you shouldn't have gone on vacation. C, you're not, you do not deserve to rest. And it's telling you like, I told you so. And that's the point where a lot of entrepreneurs quit. That's the point where a lot of entrepreneurs get stuck, where they settle for the good thing that you had created, where you were making money, where you were getting clients, where you were having business, but it was good, but it wasn't great, right? You weren't able to rest and really like settle into yourself. You were attracting a type of client that was maybe a little bit more high maintenance and not for the return in terms of the price. And so what do we do? How do you go from good to great? And for me, a little bit of it looks like burning it down, burning down what worked <laughs> in the in the good. And I talked about this, I think like last week's show a little bit, but that or two weeks ago. And then also it looks like just making room for that negative emotion and still saying, nope. And I I'm not gonna let one failure determine my inevitability of my success and my goal. So you had said to me, I remember when you first came back, the first thing that you said, your brain, your brain's story was nobody, nobody wanted it after the 20 increase, no one wanted it. And I was like, I find that really hard to believe. And so I was like digging a little bit and I was like, okay, what happened? Like, tell me actually you responded back to 20 inquiries and all of them said no. That. <laughs> and then what did you say? What actually happened? I wish we had the numbers and the stats. Oh my gosh. I know. I was like, well, actually some of them I didn't hear back at all. Um, some of them did say no, it was out of budget and some of them had answered, but I, I didn't, I didn't hear back from them after that. So it was like a mix. And then also didn't two of them end up booking later? Like it, like you did do follow-ups and they ended up booking at your later price at your new price. That came later on. So I had received like in my head, what was all no's and I was second guessing myself and wondering, well, I guess what my next move was. And then I ended up booking, it was between like two and three clients all in the same month that were totally okay with this pricing. And like, that was all that I needed to be like, okay, like this is possible. And I just need to persevere through these feelings and through the nose because the nose are normal. Mm -hmm. People are not going to not everyone is going to be able to afford this or they're not going to be interested in flowers as much to invest in it. And that's perfectly fine. But it was just like reassuring that there are people out there who do value their wedding flowers and who are willing to pay my minimum. So it was just very hopeful, but it definitely didn't come till like a couple of months after all of that. I think it was actually one month. <laughs> if we can like splice in with your permission, the actual coaching, because I do have it recorded of the of okay. the week afterwards, because your brain was being so dramatic. You were like, this is it. My oh business my is over. I went away for three weeks. I shouldn't have done it. Shouldn't have raised my prices. Everyone's a no. And it was like in such scarcity. And I've totally been there. I remember when I raised my my one-on-one prices of coaching from 6K to 10K. To me, it felt like, like I yeah. was, I remember that jump. And I I had started at $100 an hour and I was like 2,500 for six months and then 3K and then 5K and then 6K. And then I, right. And yeah. every time it felt like I was stabbing myself in the heart, like it felt so terrifying. <laughs> and what I will say is that I think people want to, so I say, what do you have to believe in order to create the result? And for you, your result wasn't convert a hundred percent of my inquiries, right? Like you had revenue goals and you had a certain amount of clients you wanted to book in this new price point. And what happened, you did end up booking them. It, I believe it was one month. I believe within 30 days, there was a 30 day period after you got back where there was a lot of no's or a lot of crickets and a lot of no's. You had Valentine's Day during that time. So you were also shifting focus. And then 
at the end of the month, you actually did hit that goal. But what feels so crazy about it is that we are always looking for evidence to believe. We're looking for evidence in our results to believe that we can believe our thoughts. So I'm like, that's not how the model works. I talk a little bit on this podcast. If you're brand new to the show, I talk about the coaching model, which is that your thoughts create your feelings, your feelings drive your actions, and your actions produce your results. But we want our results to be the evidence that, okay, now I can believe that I can raise my price. That's not how it works. And so the problem with that is that the results didn't come right away. Like the result was no's. The result was people didn't, you you weren't hitting your goal. And you had to make room to believe in the value of your offer and your new price anyway, for as long as it takes. And, and I actually think that energetically, it requires a bit of that, like, like, how much do you really believe in it? Like, let's trust it. Like the universe or God yeah. or whatever the world really like throws at us a test to test your belief in yourself and in your offer and in your business. And you stayed, while it felt terrible, you stayed steady on your pricing, on your policies for those 30 days. And maybe that's how long the lag time took for you to attract the new type of client that was going to be ready for that offer. Right? Yes, definitely. Yes. So I just think it was such a beautiful example because a lot of people are out there telling me, well, I tried to do that and it didn't work. And I'm like, "Mm, how long, how long did you try it for? And what did it didn't work even mean? Right? Was it one client? Was it 20 in Brianna's case? How many knows are you willing to hear in order to get the result that you want? And I guess, I I mean, now that you are in this price point, do you feel like what wisdom would you have given your past self? Like you are future you now who totally understands that your price is like just, your price is your price. It's just what the value of your offer is. Like what would you have wanted to say to Brianna of last January? I mean, again, it goes back to just giving myself grace, you know, like not being so hard on myself. I tell myself not to be so hard on myself and that discomfort is normal and it's just growing pains, really. It's the only way to expand and step out of your comfort zone is to be uncomfortable and that it's all in the works. I tell her that it's all in the works. It's going to be fine and that there are things coming that you can't even fathom right now. Yes. And- now tell us. Now tell the world. <laughs> so what are what are some of those things that are in the works now that you couldn't have fathomed even what? We're in July, it back in January. What's kind of going on? Tell us where you're at right now. Yeah, so I'm just getting these wedding inquiries of doing designs that I've always wanted to try and doing like large scale installations that I've only dreamed of. And it kind of reminds me of one of the days that you coached me and you said something like, like, oh, well, if this particular opportunity or this this person wanted to spend this much money, would you believe that you can do it? Would you believe that you can handle it? And like, at the time I was like, wait a minute, I want to work with these higher end clients, but do I really believe that I'd be able to pull it off? And at the time, I don't think I did. So now I'm like more rooted in that belief that I'm capable of so much more and that I'm going to keep surprising myself and growing as a designer. Does that make sense? It totally makes sense. It's like, (laughs) this is what I do. This is just what I do. And these are the clients. And there's so many different ways for you to bolster a belief, right? I mean, I just did the live event with um, with the March class of the Masterful CEO School. And one of the ma- core things that we did in the workshop was visualization and mm-hmm. coupling your future work with not just your th- written thoughts and like the one-liners and the sentences, but also like the imagery of these 
these big, large scale events that you want to be doing and that you're now doing. And when we are trying to believe something new, the problem is our brain really likes, I, I mentioned it likes evidence, but it likes to picture the fact that you can do it. And what it uses to picture it is memory. But a fun fact is that your brain actually can't distinguish between memory and your imagination, which is why oftentimes we can watch a scary movie and then later in the day, those of us with really vivid imaginations really struggle with a scary movie. I know I do because afterwards, my brain feels like I'm unsafe afterwards because it thinks of this memory and this visual of the movie as real as real life. And that's why kids as well, they struggle to distinguish between because they're so used to playing in their imagination. Now we can use this actually as a skill set as an adult and say, all right, if we practice imagining and not just imagining in the vague, like, oh, wouldn't it be so cool if I could work on this high scale thing? But like, oh, closing your eyes and visualizing a wall of flowers, like draped, you know, all of the things that obviously Pinterest is really helpful with that type of visualization, but there is nothing that can do justice to the imagination in our brain. And I just think how cool when we can couple our, our working on that, it's all in the works, this is growing pains with the visualization of where we want to go, the work we want to be doing, the type of people we want to be engaging with. Listen, there is nothing different and between you and the the number one florist in the world. I truly believe you're both just human beings living, breathing. You know, you wake up, you go to sleep, you both just get this one life. You know, they don't have anything different in terms of of time. And yes, maybe skill sets, of course, I'm not saying that there isn't a range of skill sets, but I do do believe in the human capacity to continue to blow our own mind and show ourselves what's possible. So if you want to have deeper skills in specific areas, you just go after that, but you're not going to go after it if you don't believe as a human being you're capable or it's possible for you, or that those high-end celebrity clients, if that's who you wanted to work with, are people that just want to spend $100,000 on floral installation, that they would want to work with you. And why? And who, what version of you would you have to be? What would that look like, right? So like when you envision the next level of your business. Tell us a little bit about that. What does that look like? What does it feel like? Who do you have to become? Yeah, it's funny that you mention all this too, because lately I've been like making it a point to meditate in the morning. And while I'm like meditating, I'm sort of thinking about my future Mm -hmm. self, like thinking about, oh, like, what is she wearing? What is she doing? How does she feel when she wakes up in the morning? And what does her business look like? And it's kind of like reaching out and holding hands with her, Mm. so to speak, every morning just to touch base and be like, oh, like we're the same and I'm going to be there in a few years or whatever. I love that. But um, (laughs) I love that holding hands with her. I, I feel that. Like I also feel like I'm constantly, if anything, I almost feel like she's like, holding me like she's like yeah yeah, like really supporting me because she knows more than Mm -hmm. I do she's experienced more than I do she's reaping the benefits but then I think also about like she's so grateful to me because I'm the one that had to take the action when I didn't yet believe it and so your current version of you is the real MVP right like she's doing it now it's easy for her to do it it wasn't so easy Mm -hmm. for you to do it Yeah. And I mean, it works both ways too. Like thinking about like myself last year and reaching back to her and just saying like, Hey, it's okay. You know, like forgiving myself for what I thought was like huge mistakes in the past or, you know, not being where I wanted to be last year. Just again, I say this a lot, but giving myself grace, but I'm thinking about like my future self, you know, I, 
I just, I know that my work is going to be published somewhere one day. And I know that one day my floral installation is going to be in the background of like a music video or like a television scene. Like I feel that and I know that's coming. So, I mean, that's kind of what I've been um, thinking about future wise and manifesting that in my life. And again, just keeping with the thought of attracting the clients that I want to work with in the wedding industry. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And so <laughs> I, I mean, uh, yeah, I just, I'm like so amped on this. I think that really like w- the amount of time in our brain that we spend living in our future and in our past and in our present, I actually don't find that our future is more valuable than our past in terms of I think there's value to doing both, like you said, too, to looking back and just being like, oh, I thought that this was such a big deal, this mistake. Like, I don't know if you have one in mind that you'd want to share with us of like something that at the time, like it was just like so devastating to you when you were like, this is like the worst thing ever. And now you're like, that's like a Tuesday for me now. (laughs) Yeah. Well, something that happened last year was Um, the contract that I had been using for my clients, I mean, it was very vague. I had essentially like taken it from the flower school that I had gone to and I had been using it up until that certain point and it was fine. Um, but I had an issue with a client because it just wasn't specific. It didn't specify like the limitations of changing her wedding designs Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and what it meant to take the design off of the flower order and then put it back on a year later. Like it it was, it was very vague. And I was beating myself up about that for a while because it was a poor experience on her end. And I felt like I wasn't being as professional as I could be and not having a concrete contract Mm -hmm. to offer to people. But it was more of just a wake up call. Like, okay, this didn't work out and it can be fixed. It just means that I need to get a different contract and contact some lawyers and make sure all my ducks are in a row before I take on a new client. So it's all like just trial and adjustment. I think it's so, it's so good to, share these because other people, what what I don't want people to hear when they're listening is like, oh, I need to make sure that the first thing I do, if I want to start a business, if you're listening to the show and you don't yet have a business, but you're starting one or you're in the very beginning stages is like, oh, I need to hire a lawyer. I need to make sure and approach it with that perfectionist attitude. What I want you to hear mm-hmm. from Brianna's experience is that you're, you're always going to have something that's not in a row and then it's always fixable. It's like, there's no... Yes failure that you can't overcome and then still have a successful business. So if you're trying to avoid failure, you might as well not be an entrepreneur because there's no (laughs) avoiding it. Instead, we collect it. You know, my clients all know failure collection. That's the point of everything that we're pursuing. We're like, oh, failure collected. I mean, honestly, the amount of failure that I've collected this year has been greater than any other year. And Therefore, I'm going to have more success this year than any other year. And I think that that's what we keep learning year after year after year is that failure isn't the opposite of success. It's a part of it. And so now that you kind of have that seasoned thought or experience, what would you say that advice that you have now to other entrepreneurs who are starting out, who are maybe where you were last year in terms of things that they might be stressing about, but now you you realize that they're wasting a lot of time there? I would say stop thinking so much and just go for it. Because even if you fall flat on your face, like the beauty is in the pursuit of it. And that's where you're going to keep growing and evolving in your craft. So good. So simple and so good. (laughs) Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Brianna, for sharing with us the behind the scenes of some of your business. I know we love to, especially because of social media, we love to put out there all of the beauty, all of the 
the mastery, all of the things that are working and that what we want to define us. But I'm really so grateful to those entrepreneurs who are willing to pull the curtain open and show us as other women business owners that it's okay to have failure. It's okay to have moments where you're feeling totally in doubt and in disarray and confused and all of that. But like Brianna said, if you just give yourself a pause to not think so much and you just take action and you just do, you're going to have a fuller, more beautiful, more vibrant, more alive experience, not only of your business, but also of your life. So thank you so much for your wisdom. Where if people want to connect with you because they have a killer uh, event or a wedding that they want to put on and they want someone who, something we didn't mention actually, and I'll just drop it here, is that one of your most important, I think, things about your brand that sets you apart is that you are very eco-conscious. And so I don't know if you want to just say one thing about that before you tell us where we can find you. There is a lot of damage being caused by everyone, but a lot of people in the floral industry, um, there's a lot of, there's so much plastic in this industry and working at flower shops. I mean, everything was plastic. Like the packaging was plastic. The designs had plastic in it. There were, um, there's flower foam that people use that doesn't, break down and it's full of chemicals. So I just wanted to make a conscious effort to make smarter decisions with um, using biodegradable materials, um, switching from things like flower foam into uh, wool floral cubes instead. Um, I'm nowhere near perfect, but I am making these decisions like intentionally every day and I'm still learning. But it's very important in my business to be more eco-friendly and to be kinder to the environment. Yeah. And honestly, (laughs) if you are someone who cares about, like, to me, as my business grows, I just think, like, naturally, my carbon footprint is going to grow, which is why I think it's even more important that all I'm very conscious about the people that I hire for my events, for my team, for everything. I know I also had another client um, who is in Denver and she helps people make races. She helps organizations help them reduce their carbon footprint and actually make them an eco-conscious because they think about all the plastic water bottles and things that go into races. And and there are easy ways to save a ton, right? You don't have to not do the event, but we can be conscious about it. So if that is important to you, Brianna is your girl and wait until you see her designs. Where can people people find you. Yeah. So they can find me on Instagram at wildflower touch, all one word, T O U C H. Or my website is wildflower touch by Brie, B R I. Dot com. All right, you guys, you you heard it first here before Brie is on the next music video that you're watching. I am so <laughs> grateful for you coming on the show and we will look forward to hearing an update and maybe next year we'll have you on the show again to hear, hear where you're at. Yes, thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. <laughs> Okay, you guys, do you just love Brianna? Not all CEOs have to be hard and tough. I know sometimes I can get a little spicy on here, but I wanted you to experience Brianna because she thinks of herself as an introvert. She is soft and feminine and a lot of the things that I'm trying to become more of. And I think you guys can really learn from her. Did you just love her visual of holding hands with her future self? I am stealing that for sure. I just think that it is so special when entrepreneurs are willing to pull back the curtain with us and show us that it isn't all sunshine and rainbows and puppies and or whatever you're not allergic to. And it is really a a gift for us to experience the 50-50 of people who you might see on social media and see they are the epitome of success that you're striving for. Well, yes, success is still a 50-50 emotional experience. So if you are someone who is thinking about raising your prices or taking time off, 
uh, I want you to put this episode in your bank, in your value bank, and re-listen to it right before you go to. Just reminding yourself that there is no perfect time to do anything. We cannot escape the failure, and we need to, as Brianna said, always be giving ourselves more grace. For those of you who just this week signed up and joined us in the September class of the Masterful CEO School, I cannot wait to get started with you. For those of you who are currently in it, I am just so enjoying. We're only halfway through and we have got a lot of magic and mastery to still pursue. For those of you who are brand new here and you are like, how do I really apply and dive into this work and experience this and put it into the context of my own work, please go to sincerelyfutureyou.com or come and hang out with me over on Instagram. That is where I always let you know what is coming up next and how you can join. So it is not yet sold out. So the good news is, is if you're still interested in applying this work, you can, whether you're a beginner entrepreneur, you can actually join the splash pad right now. That is my course and lifetime community for applying and giving you guys business 101 for those of you who still just think of yourselves as someone who's passionate about whatever idea or project or offer you have going. And then if you are at the phase where you have a business, but you really want to scale it to the next level, you want systems, you want time mastery and money mastery, you need to get yourself into the September class of the Masterful CEO School. So um, you can come find me at Instagram at Jess McKinley Wayno. That's Jess J-E-S-S, McKinley, M-C-K-I-N-L-E-Y, Wayno, U-Y-E-N-O. And let me know that you listened to this episode. Tag a friend, tag me so that I can shout you out, so that I can connect. I respond to all of my DMs and I just love hearing what really resonated with you. And I know Brie will as well. All right, you guys have the most beautiful week and I'll see you next week. Hey, hamsters. If you want to learn more about today's topic, head over to what's happening.com forward slash podcast. That's what's happening. W H A T S H A P P Y N I N G.com forward slash podcast. If you're a business owner and you're resonating with what we talk about here, what are you even doing? Come hang out with me over where the party's at on Instagram at what's happening. W Jess. Again, that's happy. H-A-P-P-Y-N-I-N-G and book a discovery call to see if coaching is your next best step.